and it's really good to see you. Well, think about it. You're the only reason I'm here doing this. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of December 15th. Now, we're going to do the same thing in this weekend video as I do all through the week. We're going to look at some hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm talking about stocks that are under five bucks that can be found on any market, the major exchanges and the OTC. Now, we are particularly focusing in on stocks that have potential to make us money. Where do I find these stocks with potential? Normally looking at the charts. Folks, I can look at a lot of charts in say 10 minutes. Easily, probably more than two, 300 charts because I'm glancing at them. I'm not having to focus and read anything like news. In 10 minutes, how many pieces of news could you really read through? How many could you scan through? And how much information did you miss while you were scanning? And can you really determine which piece of news is hot? When I'm looking at a chart, all I got to do is look for a blue tsunami wave on the bottom. That's more volume coming into the picture. Or look for a green turnaround, cutting through a red line. I can see that. Or a long rip, just going up, 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 up. Anything like that tells me there is heat in the chart. Well, when I find a chart that has heat, then I take the time to go rummaging around through all those press releases and filings, looking for that catalyst. Now, the catalyst doesn't have to be fresh laid today. <laughs> Any catalyst can get a hot chart moving, even a stale catalyst. So don't just look at news today. Go back over the last 30 days of news and filings. See if you can find something that looks interesting and hot. When you find a hot piece of information to go with your hot chart, now you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I'm bringing to you regularly. And I've got three for you right now. First one we're going to jump into is INPX in Pixian. Oh boy, folks, I'm excited to share this one with you. Not only has she got an atypical breakout chart that she's breaking out of right now, but she has got a smorgasbord of catalysts. We have a spin out, so we're getting dividends. We have an uplisting to the NASDAQ. We have a merger. We have a merger. I already said that. Well, that's because they got two of them. Folks, this is exciting. So in Pixian, she finished the day at seven and a half cents and she did drop over 4% on Friday. She is on the major exchange. I like these penny stocks on the major exchanges. They come with benefits. First off, they're free to trade. On the OTC, you got to pay to get in. You got to pay to get out. I hate that. On the major exchange, there are no transaction fees. Plus, you get to trade them every marketable hour. That means pre-market and after-market. You can trade these. You don't need special permission or qualifications. Just get in there and trade. Just remember, you've got to change the time period for your order. It is not a day trade. That is in there by default. If you go and place your order and that's in there, it won't even see your order. It's got to be day plus extension or good till cancel plus extension. You got to get extension in there or it just won't matter. But you can trade it. And you can't do that with OTC stocks. So what is in Pixian about? Well, they do have a description down here for Cicerex, but Cicerex was a company they spun out a couple years ago. So we're not going to use this description. We're going to jump into a news press, a recent one here, and get the most recent description we can. So they tell us here, in Pixian is the innovator of indoor intelligence, delivering actionable insights for people, places, and things. Combining the power of mapping, positioning, and analytics, and Pixian helps to create a smarter, safer, and more secure environment. The company's indoor intelligence and industrial real-time location system solutions are leveraged by a multitude of industries to optimize operations, increase productivity, and enhance safety. And Pixian customers can take advantage of industry-leading location awareness, analytics, sensor fusion, Internet of Things, and IIoT to create exceptional experiences and to do good with indoor data. So it's almost like a Google map. That's outside, right? You open it up and it shows you this building, that building. Well, they're doing the same thing for indoor. You can find things, find people, find places indoors. So what was the relative volume around in Pixian today? Oh, we got a nice increase going from 9.3 million up to 86 million today. You're looking at about nine times their normal volume. Share structure. Well, they don't give us the float, 
We do know the outstanding share count is 72 million and our float won't be any higher than that and it could be considerably less. Our market cap for the company is currently 5.4 million. Taking a look at the financials, financials are doing very well. They are consistently growing over the last four years. Back in 2019, they had $6.3 million. I know that doesn't look like millions, but when you add those three zeros, they tell us to add to any of the numbers on any of these charts, it's millions. <laughs> then it kicked up to 9.2, 15.9, and at the end of 2022, we were at 19.4 million, and they got to keep almost 14 million of that. Looking at our quarterlies, well, that's a little strange. Her annuals were climbing, 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 but her quarterlies had an up and a back down. We started at 2.5, hit 5.2, and then fell back here to just over 2 million. Still taking home profit. Taking a look at that balance sheet. Well, they got lots of money and cash equivalents. 15.6 million in the bank, roughly. Total assets. You got about 30.4 million. Total liabilities is less. We like that. 22 million. That gives us positive stockholder equity of 8.4 million. We ain't holding a bag here. Disclosures for INPX. All right, we have got a bunch of 8Ks here. Actually, you see how many we've got here? There's probably more. These are all recent, and there's a ton of them. That's because they're doing a ton, and most of it is backed up in the news. So rather than go through all these filings, let's just jump on over to that news. So I have gone back here just to October of this year, and pretty much all the news is focused in on what they're doing right now. In Pixian announced this planned spinoff and merger of Saves UK Business with Damon Motors Inc., makers of the award-winning Hypersport electric motorcycle and plans for NASDAQ listing of the combined company. And most of this news is all about that. Then we get another bomb thrown on top of this. In Pixian announced a shareholder approval for the proposed merger with XTI Aircraft Company, the developer of a vertical lift crossover airplane. Now, this is an entirely different merger. We're going to get into those details because this piece of news that came out on the 14th talks about all of it in one place. Thank God for that. So let's jump into this piece of news. This came out on the 14th, just a couple days ago. Actually, uh, yeah, two days ago. And Pixian announces record date and details for the subsidiary spinoff and its planned business combination with Damon Motors. And Pixie and security holders to receive shares of the spinoff standalone public company. And Pixian announced that December 27th is the record date. We don't have many days here, folks. You want to get into this, you got to own shares. And I'll be honest, folks, the fact of the matter is T plus two comes into play. What I'm saying is transaction time. You know, when you deposit a check, they say you can't spend the money until the check clears. That takes two to three days. That's exactly the same thing here. When you buy shares in a company stock, it is not recorded and on the books in the system for two days. I know, you'd think we'd be faster than that. So if you bought them on the 26th or the 27th, it would not be recorded till after the 27th and you would not qualify for the dividend, even though you did legally and literally buy them before the 27th. So you've got to buy them no later than the 25th if you want to be a part of this. They go on to tell us that uh, the company is called Graffiti Holdings. This is the one they're spinning off. The spinoff is required to be completed before they do a merger. All right, follow me here, folks. Once they spin off this company, Graffiti Holdings, onto the NASDAQ, they are then going to do a merger with Damon Motors, the maker of the acclaimed Hypersport electric motorcycle. The Damon Hypersport is expected to be one of the safest, smartest, and most powerful motorcycles available in the market. The company's combined listing will be on the NASDAQ. So it's going to spin off to the NASDAQ. Then they're going to have a merger. We are going to get shares in that new company. And then we're going to get the rip because of the merger, right? 
Now this motorcycle, this is something else. It is a Trifecta 200. They tell us here that this motorcycle has 200 horsepower, can go 200 miles per hour, and can get 200 miles of range on a charge. And so far they have over $85 million worth of orders sitting on the books for this motorcycle. After the consummation of the business combination, now this is interesting and I don't have a lot of information on this. 80% of the spinoff shares will be subject to lockup restrictions. 80% of all the shares that they're going to give out as dividends aren't going to be able to be sold for 90 days and a second tranche up to 180 days. Now, I don't know if this is for us, the public, or if this is for bigger inside investors. I honestly don't know. I was looking around, but I'm going to have to do some more deeper dive into this. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We're talking about a spin out. We're talking about dividends and a merger. That is for the spin out. Now we've got a merger for the company that's left behind in Pixian. In Pixian will retain the industrial internet of things business line and continues to progress towards the completion of the business combination transaction with XTI aircraft company. In Pixian may elect to change the record date for the spinoff to a later date or to not proceed with the distribution. I hate these sort of sentences, but they got to cover their butts. So I wouldn't put a whole lot of worry into that, but it is sitting there. This press release does not contain all the information that should be considered concerning the spinoff and the business combination with Damon. And I'm always telling you that. I don't give you all the information. They don't give you all the information. You need to do your due diligence if you're looking to invest. Investing means you're leaving your money there for a while. You're trusting these people with your money. So what's the biggest part of your due diligence? In the management. If you're going to invest in a company and leave your money there, make sure you've got honest, reliable, hardworking management. That's the first thing you should be checking before you look at anything else. Now, the other piece of news I want to look at is about that XTI aircraft merger. In Pixian today announced it has received shareholder approval of the merger agreement with XTI Aircraft Company, an aviation company developing the TriFan 600, a fixed wing vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. The merger is expected to be completed at or around year end and remains subject to certain closing conditions, which reminds me, I missed it over in the other piece of news. They expect that merger, that spin out to be completed by January 17th. So we're talking uh, basically one month, folks, 30 days for the uplisting, for the spin out and for the merger. And they say this is going to happen in that same window. So we've got all of this happening in the next 30 days, folks. That makes this a very hot penny stock. XTI Aerospace is valued at roughly 250 to 343 million dollars. This is not a startup company, this XTI. They tell us here that the company has deep expertise and success in bringing new aircrafts to market, including more than 40 FAA certified new aircraft configurations. 40 of them under their belt already, and now they've got this one as well. So we have got a lot going on here, folks. Getting into this before the 25th will qualify you for the spin out onto the NASDAQ of their company grad field or whatever it is. And then behind that, once it successfully gets onto the NASDAQ and spins out, they're then going to follow that up with the merger immediately. We're not going to be waiting for that, which means that's going to cause excitement, heat. That means that stock, your new shares in that stock should start running. In the meantime, the shares you bought in Impixian to qualify you for that dividend is going to start heating up because they got their own merger going on with XTI. Folks, I'm losing wind here just telling you about all of this. It is quite exciting to me and I don't see any reason for you not to consider this stock. Not to mention the chart's hot. It is an atypical breakout chart breaking out right now. Let's go take a look at that. I hope you're ready to do some charting. I love charting. We're going to chart all these stocks in my free toy. 
my free trading platform, Think or Swim, better known as TOS, or is that TOYS? <laughs> We're looking at Impixion, ticker INPX. This is a six month, four hour view. We got a real nice high back in April, though it was short lived. She jumped from about 36 cents for unknown reasons up to $1.84. That's between 500 and 600% gains. Then she fell fast and furious back up underneath the 200, and she has predominantly been underneath it all this time, hitting a low of 5 cents in November. Now, as you can see clearly here, she does have a habit of bouncing, just not as big as that one right there, but big enough to pay attention to by all means. See our 200 here? Well, every time she makes an attempt to break out, she's only breaking through. She can't keep her footing up there and keeps falling back up underneath the 200 and trying again. Well, each one of these tries is about 100%. That's 150%. That's 100%. That's 100%. Lots of days to make money as she's falling, right? Now, I've drawn a channel here across the tops of these all the way down to the bottom to see where things would go. And it's curious how this lays out. You'll see it on other charts. But right now, she is breaking out over the 200 on the four-hour chart. So let's zoom in on that low bubble area right here. So as you can see, once she hit the low bubble, she's not doing anything. She's going sideways. Yes, exactly what we wanted. <laughs> that is to say, it quit falling. It was in a downtrend. First thing it's got to do is quit falling. It did that, now it's going sideways. And it's found itself a solid floor. Look what it chose. The 200-day haul. We talk about this a lot. I keep telling you that penny stocks are paying heed to this. This is a perfect example. Look, it is not just touching it occasionally. It's sleeping on it, getting up through the day, running around, coming home, picking up a uh, treat, going out, coming back, sleeping on it. As it is curving around, it is laying on the 200-day haul. So why am I making such a big deal about it? Because chances are you don't have it on your trading platform. And you know how much it costs to get it there? Zero. So go get yourself the 200-day haul. I chose to make mine purple when it's falling and blue when it's climbing. You can do whatever you want. So she was paying very strong heed to this 200-day haul, following it up and around to the 200-day SMA and broke out. She is just over six cents and went just over 12 cents. That is just about a 100% jump, like she's used to doing over and over again. She did come back down after that big jump, came through the 200, down through the 50, Bounced back up through the 50, is on her 20, just underneath the 200. We're at 7.5 cents. The 200 is at 7.7 cents. Our volume has been getting stronger these last few days, and it was particularly strong today. Our oscillators, though, right now are pretty cool. That was a big climb up and then a big fall down. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So there's not a lot going on here. She was falling, hanging on to her 200, and then she let go. Is this a bad thing? To me, it looks like a crouch and pounce. If a cat crouches, what's it normally going to do? It's going to jump higher than where it was. And that's what we see here. It came down, hit a low, and jumped way up here. Got up on top of the 200, crouched again. Another big jump coming down to the 200. And this jump right here from its crouch was 6.1 up to 10. That's an 80% jump right there. Came back down to the 200, bounced off of that, hit a new high here of 11.8 cents before she came down. And look where she's landed. She's bounced. She's not actually on the 200. She has bounced up. That was a perfect landing. And now our 200, which was totally flat here, is now turned up and starting to climb. Our oscillators are looking real sad right now. They were hot when she was climbing, but that was a big fall most of the day. So the oscillators are telling us things are bad. I don't believe it. <laughs> five day, five minute. Now I found this interesting. This is the channel I drew for the top of those big bounces. Well, here's one of those bounces and look how she kind of rides on top of it. There's a bounce and look, look how she's laying on it like it's a support. 
it's a channel for those big bounces and she's paying heed to it. So there is something to that line. She's bounced way up here off of it and she's come down and look, she bounced off of my channel line and she's come underneath it and she's arguing with it right now. This is a very interesting chart, folks. She shows a lot of volatility, ups and downs, ups and downs, and most of the ups are 100%, so we can make a lot of money here just getting in and getting out. But keep in mind, if you wanna play this up listing with this spin out and get your free dividends, if you're gonna get in and out, in and out, make sure you're in by the end of the 25th so that the T plus two, the transaction time, doesn't disqualify you from the dividends. Because once you have those shares, they're gonna do the merger with Damon Motors and that's gonna get your dividend stock to start running, your brand new holdings. You've got a hot company, your holdings. Then you've got Impixion, which is supposedly in the same amount of time that they've cleaned house, are gonna be bringing in the XTI airplane company, and that's gonna run. So you've got lots of different opportunities here to consider, folks. Whether you wanna play bounces, you wanna play dividend, mergers, it's all there for the taking. INPX, you can thank me later. This next stock, we've covered it before, back in June. This is Balancan USA, ticker BCNN. We're taking a second look at it now because a follower on Twitter, Daniel, requested that we look at it. So we're going to see what's up with Balancan. Now, the first thing I notice is that her price has dropped about 50% since we looked at it last. However, right now is a good time to consider it because her chart is an atypical breakout chart setting up right now. Now, the problem with it is, is that she hasn't got any fresh, hot news. Not anything besides her financials, which are good. She is increasing her business. She is increasing her revenues. So BCNN, she finished today at 00265, and she was up almost 20.5% gains today. She's on the pink tier. She's current, and she's got those precious green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. Verified profile and a transfer agent verified. That is validated information. And when you trade pinks, that's the last thing you get is any validated information, not even her financials. So when you're dealing with pinks, look for these two green ticks, folks. That's the only validated information you're going to get. This looks good. So what is Balancan about? Well, they tell us down here that Balancan USA offers a service delivery platform that solves the last mile of installing, monitoring, and maintaining technology systems and smart connected devices. Tikomo, which is their new subsidiary, means tech cloud in Japanese. We play at the intersection of two major trends, the urbanization of product and service delivery, and the explosion of smart connected devices brought about by the Internet of Things. Our service delivery platform was designed to intelligently automate the installation and maintenance of products by offering on-demand local technician resources, as well as providing a smart interface for the monitoring and management of connected devices. So they're going to deliver the device, they're going to install the device, and then they're gonna monitor that device for good health. Our platform results in less people, less time, and less cost for our customers. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, she dropped from about 28 million shares down to 16 million shares today. And she took gains. Very interesting. Share structure. Outstanding share count is about 308 million. Insiders got themselves about 135 million of those. That leaves us a float of about 173 million, an average float. Market cap for the company is under a million. She's at 817,000. Financials for the company. Now, surprisingly, we don't have any financials over here. Not on the annual, not on the quarterly. We don't even get a balance sheet. So I ran over to Yahoo Finance trying to get some information there. Nothing there either. So the only thing we've really got is the most recent financial. Taking a look at her assets, at the end of September of this year, she had $2.9 million. Total liabilities, $10.1 million. Ugh. That gives us shareholder equity? No, this is shareholder deficit. We're holding a bag of $7.1 million. 
Taking a look at our revenues, looking at the last quarter of this year compared to the same quarter of last year, we have more than doubled our revenues, jumping from 400,000 up to 858,000. So business is growing. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company, we don't have anything here since October of this year, so let's just bounce on into that news. There really isn't a lot of news over here. Most of it has to do with their financials. We did get a piece of news all the way back in May, and I'm sure we covered this in the June video, but we're going to look at it again. And then we've got the most recent financial release here. So let's take a look at both of these pieces of news. The one that came out May 17th. The company and Takumo announced its partnership with the largest third-party managed service provider to the retail industry. They support the IT store technology to enterprise retailers, including top 10 North American retailers in thousands of retail locations nationwide. We are excited to announce this collaborative co-innovation partnership. When Takumo is fully integrated with their existing client service management systems, they will have the leading on-demand dynamic workforce solution in North America. This ensures that they will maintain their dominant position in today's new normal business environment. Takumo solves many current industry challenges and the company offers three primary products. The Takumo Pro, which connects enterprises, retailers, and original equipment manufacturers with local skilled resources to install and maintain technology systems. Takumo IQ provides real-time data from all connected assets in a single pane of glass. And Takumo Smart, which delivers the complete service chain for smart connected devices. And then that last piece of news, we've already actually covered the financials, but they give us a little more information here. They do tell us that they kicked up their revenues, as we saw, but they have also brought down their liabilities by about 50%. 100% increase on revenues, 50% decline on liabilities. They tell us as of September 30th this year, our result was a reduction in liability from $9.43 million down to $4.92 million. So they saved themselves $4.9 million. Revenues up, liabilities down, and they're doing business. And that's the best we got right now, except we do have a hot chart. It is an atypical breakout chart looking for an opportunity. Let's go check it out. At first glance, it looks pretty flat. This is ticker BCNN, Balakan, USA. And we're looking at a six month, four hour view with our high back in April, just under a penny at double zero nine. And we had a low here of triple zero seven at the beginning of November. Now, as you can see between the high bubble and the low bubble, there has been nothing going on. She's flat and just dribbling downhill ever so slowly. Even with the 200 hovering above her, she never took an opportunity to even try to break out. Not until we hit this low bubble right there and all this volume came into the picture and changed the game. She bounced off of this low bubble, going through all of her SMAs, way above the 200, and then falling back higher than where she started. That's important, folks. That, to me, is a token sign that she's serious about wanting to break out, and she's going to be looking for an opportunity. She fell back down to her 200-day haul, laid on that for a few days, Broke through the 200 again, fell back to the 20. That's a better position. She's jumped off of that, cutting through her 50 and tagging onto that 200 day SMA. This looks like it is ready to break out. All of our SMAs have turned up and are starting to climb. All of our oscillators are pointing up and climbing. You can't go wrong, folks, if every single oscillator is pointing to the moon. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. 20 days ago, we had a high of 004, came down underneath that 200-day SMA, hitting a low of 0009, crushing that 200, falling back underneath it, landing on the 50, stronger position, bounced off of that, getting onto the nine-day escalator, and just climbing. All of our SMAs are about ready to cross that 200. I see a lot of potential in this chart. Our oscillators are very strong, but there is a wee bit of cooling off right now. Our RSI has just fallen from the overbought down to 61. Taking a look at our five day, five minute. Well, that's not a bad chart. We got a low here 
underneath the 200 of 0009 and a high of, oh goodness, 0035. Folks, in one day, we had over 300% run on this stock. She came down to the 200, looked like she was going to hang on to it, but lost her footing, fell underneath. She's come back up, and right now, it looks like she's bouncing off of that 50-day SMA. All of these SMAs have already crossed the 200. Looks like she is continuing her climb. Our oscillators, they're pretty cool right now, actually, on the five-day, five-minute. Things are pulling down. So her revenues are increasing. She is doing good business. We just don't have any fresh catalysts, but the chart has potential for a breakout. So I'd be putting BCNN at least on my watch list. See some volume come in? Maybe you can catch yourself some good gains. Our last stock is ticker CEOS, Secors. I think I'm pronouncing that right. This company just came onto my radar here in the last couple of weeks, and I am really excited about this company. I am behind what they are doing, so much so that I reached out to the CEO of the company, Kate Monroe, and I requested an interview, and she said yes. Yeah! So we're going to be talking to her in January. We'll record the interview on Saturday the 9th, and I'll release it on Sunday the 10th. Now, because we are going to be doing an interview with the CEO, I am not going to be doing a deep dive here. We're just going to cover this as I normally would. So CEOS, her chart, it's brilliant. It's an atypical breakout chart getting ready to break out right now. Catalyst-wise, she's got a lot of things going on. They made an acquisition not too long ago, and that new acquisition is just now starting to create revenues. They are making deals that are helping their business to expand. I am really liking this. CEOS, she finished the day on Friday just a little over a penny and a half at 1.6, and she was over 6.5% gains. She is on the pink tier. She's current, and she's got those two green ticks. She's got her validated information, so she's looking good. So what does C-Cores do? Well, they've got two divisions. One deals with products called Psyche, and the other one deals with services called Vetcom. Psyche, Inc., is vertically integrated in the research and development, production and commercialization of therapeutic and medicinal ingredients and formulations for its premium functional product lines, which are developed by its mycology and botany experts, their mushroom and their plant experts. And here recently, the company acquired Vetcom. Vetcom is a veterans education and benefits company focused on assisting the over 20 million United States veterans that qualify for underutilized annual benefits owed to them. As a result, billions of dollars in veterans benefits go unclaimed every month. Billions of dollars every month that belong in veterans' hands. And this company is helping them get that money. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, it had a nice pop today, about 50% increase in volume, jumping from 415,000 up to 666,000. Share structure, outstanding share count. We're at about 332 million. The insiders own 183 million of those shares, leaving us a balance of about 148 million shares. Market cap for the company is currently about $5.3 million. Taking a look at those financials. Now, they are just coming into money. As you can see here, they haven't been making anything until the end of 2022 when they only had $19,000. But it's revenues on the books, first time. And they got to keep $11,000 of that. Looking at our quarterlies, as you can see, they are increasing $1,558. 117. Folks, that's over a 100% increase. No, they're not big numbers, but it's growing. You can't expect a little tiny plant like this to be a tree tomorrow. As long as it just keeps growing, it is doing well. Just check out the balance sheet for the company. Cash and cash equivalents, they got about $93,000 altogether. Total assets is about $1.9 million. And total liabilities is just about that too, 1.9 million. So we are virtually even on stockholder equity. We are down about $14,000. But with revenues coming in, that's going to change in a big hurry here. Taking a look at those disclosures. We don't have anything here since 2019. 
but we do have a ton of news. So let's bounce on over there. Now, we are not going to go into all of this, but we are going to look at two pieces of news. The rest I want to headline. I am back here to May of this year. The company completes the acquisition of Vetcom Corps, expanding into the multi-billion dollar veterans benefit industry. Vetcom increases revenue potential through new affiliate partnerships and launches a referral program for the No Veteran Left Behind mission. We're going to dive into this one. That's a curious piece of news there. The company announces appointment of Marine Corps veteran Kate Monroe as the new CEO, providing strategic vision and exceptional leadership. God, am I excited to be talking to her. The company is now exploring uplisting to the NASDAQ as well as dual listing. The company announces a partnership with Veteran Forces to offer access to benefits and support for nearly 2 million veterans. The company reports record revenue following the Vetcom acquisition, up 100%. And their most recent piece of news that just came out a few days ago, Vetcom approved as partner with the Department of Defense Skill Bridge Program. So diving into the two I want to share with you. This one came out May 2nd. Vetcom increases revenue potential through new affiliate partnerships and launches referral program for the no veteran left behind. The company is proud to announce the launch of its referral program as part of the mission to ensure the no veteran is left behind. With over 11 million veterans in the United States who have not claimed their service-related disability benefits, Vetcom is dedicated to helping them get what they are owed up to $3,600 a month. Think about that, folks. That's a month. That's $42,000 a year. Now, I'm going to get the hard facts talking to Kate, but from what I've been able to gather, it is roughly $1,000 for a vet to become a member of this company so that she can go get your benefits. So for $1,000 up front, they can get up to $3,600 every month, $42,000 a year, for the rest of their life. Folks, that's impressive. Putting all that money where it belongs, in our veterans' hands, the people that gave the absolute most for us. The referral program is open to everybody, including under and unrated veterans, veteran organizations and charities, as well as the general public. I'll be asking her a lot of questions about this. The program is designed to reward and encourage individuals and organizations to help veterans get rated through cash incentives. Vetcom believes that with the launch of the referral program, it will reach and assist increasing amounts of veterans in need. This really is a win-win-win across the board. We're investing in a company that is investing in those people who invested the most into our country. She's going to pay us to refer a vet. They're going to get money every single month, and the company's going to get money. Everybody comes out ahead here, folks. How can you not be excited about that? And that last piece of news. This came out on December 11th. The company is pleased to announce its partnership with the Department of Defense, their Skill Bridge program. The Department of Defense Skill Bridge program facilitates the transition of service members into the civilian workforce through internships or apprenticeships. By participating, Vetcom is getting employees that are highly skilled and disciplined, bringing diverse perspectives and experiences. The Skill Bridge program stands as a crucial bridge between military service personnel getting out of the military and civilian employment, offering a financial lifeline to service members during their transition. This initiative provides up to six months of funding directly from the military. So you've got ex-military personnel, vets, coming out of the military needing a job. They can get a job right here with her helping vets get their disability benefits. What a great job. And they're going to get paid by the military, which is going to help this company since they don't have to pay all of those people. Again, another win-win-win situation. I can't find anything not to like about this company. I know a lot of vets. I served my time. I think everybody who serves this country is deserving of what's owed to them. And I am all behind a company that is helping us get it. Let's go take a look at that chart now. 
So let's chart C cores now, ticker C E O S. This is a six month, four hour view with our high being six months ago in April. We were at about 5.1 cents when we were above the 200 here. She came under the 200 for a couple months, finally broke out, and this could have been a nice breakout, but something happened here, and I'm not sure what, in August, and she fell over 50% right there. But she wasn't done falling. She kept dribbling downhill until she hit this ultimate low of 0077 at the end of October. And off of that low bubble, she's changing her trend. She's not falling anymore. She's bounced up off of it, up to this 50-day SMA, which she has been suckled to all of this time and has brought our 50-day SMA up. All of our SMAs are now starting to climb. The 200-day SMA is closing in fast, creating a gravitational pull on the price. She's now pushing away from the 50, running towards that 200. This looks like a perfect setup for a breakout, folks. Our volume has been pretty consistent throughout this period of time, and all of our oscillators are now climbing. Not hard, not furious, but they are all climbing. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So here's our 200. Our price was above it up here at about one and a half cents, fell a half a penny, jumped back up, and then went sideways until she got to the 20-day SMA. And look how many times she has hit that 20-day SMA. This is becoming the one she's going to be bouncing off of. That's the way it appears. And where she sits right now, it looks like she's ready to climb. All of our SMAs are beautifully spaced and all going uphill. Our oscillators... Well, they're a bit wavy here, but they are working their way up slowly. Same down here. We are underneath our line, but it is trying to push up right now, just like our RSI, going from 51 up to 56. Looking at our five-day, five-minute, well, that's not bad. We got a low down here of 1.2 cents, jumped up to 1.6 cents, which is really where she's been sitting right up here at the top. She can't seem to get over this. But what she has done is she has placed herself on this 50-day SMA securely. There's no arguing about this, and now she's starting to push away from it. Our oscillators all say we are starting a climb right now. CEOS. There's a lot going on with this company, folks. She is just now coming into revenues because she is getting her vetcom business going. There are over 20 million vets who need help. 11 million of them haven't even filed. Folks, this is a wide open market and who else is doing it? I feel proud to be telling you about this company and I'm going to be excited to be talking to the CEO. Come on, folks, put CEOS on your watch list. But of course, please, do some more due diligence. Don't count on me. I don't cover everything. We covered three good stocks today, and there are lots of gaps in the due diligence. So please, it's your money you're investing. Do the due diligence. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.